I don't know where all of Alec Murdoch's money went, but a South Carolina judge just made a promising ruling that should lead to answers in this deepening mystery. My name is Mandy Matney, and I've been investigating the Murdoch family for more than two and a half years now, and this is the Murdoch Murders Podcast. Judge Daniel Hall ordered an injunction to freeze Alec Murdoch's assets and appointed receivers to manage and recover funds that could pay alleged victims currently suing the Murdochs. And that is a big deal. But to understand how big of a deal this is, we need to go back a couple weeks and explain how this ruling happened. Let's go back to Friday, October 22nd, just three days after Alec Murdoch was denied bond. Eric Blaine called me early in the morning. The audio here is imperfect. As I said before, I'm always a journalist before I'm a podcaster, and in this moment, I was more concerned about breaking the story than I was about getting perfect audio. You'll also hear from our sweet dog, Luna, who tends to get excited when Eric Bland calls. Friday bombshell. We are filing. Mark Tinsley is filing and Joe McCullough is filing. All three of us. The same motion to have a receiver appointed for uh, Alex Murdoch and all of his assets and everything. And it's going to be John T. Lay, who is a significant defense attorney in this state. The bombshell motion is saying essentially that He's already shown that he's dissipating assets. Um, it's, the receiver has extremely broad powers. To give you an example, Peter Protopopoulos has been appointed by Justice Toll. She sits over all the asbestos cases in the state. And essentially, the receiver goes out and sues everybody, recover money for a fund of victims. And already they've recovered like $200 million in, in just nine months. Same kind of thing that we're doing here. John T. Lay is going to be an officer, either under Don Beatty or an appointed judge. And he essentially has the broadest powers of anybody under the law. He literally can walk into any business bank with an order, show them the order and say, hand over everything you got. And so Mark Tinsley's motion is already filed in his case, so you can look at it, but this is essentially going to uh, lock Alex to the point that he won't even be able to buy a cup of coffee. That's a quote. And, and anybody in his family, it'll avoid the power of the attorney that Buster has, and this guy will go after the money at Bank of America, trace it, he will unwind every single transaction that Alex has done since 2015 when he opened the Bank of America account. He'll go to people who have money and say, you have to disgorge that money. And more importantly, he's going to trace, and I want you to listen to this, Dick Carpoolian and Jim Griffin's fees. Dick Arpulian and Jim Griffin, who are currently representing Alec in multiple criminal cases, were hired to defend Paul Murdoch in the boat crash criminal case in either March or April 2019, which would be soon after Alec Murdoch transferred a large amount of settlement money to his own account, according to prosecutors. Bland said that the receivers will be able to find out whether or not Griffin and Harpootlian were paid in fees from the Satterfield settlement. Basically, the receivers should be able to find out where all of Alex's money has gone since he opened the Forge account in 2015. It, it is so oppressive. You, you, you cannot believe it. You just cannot believe the powers of a receiver. If we have one of them, the... Uh, the broadest receiver statutes in the country. Okay. And I'm telling you, Alice will not be able to buy a cup of coffee. And Dick Harpoolian and Jim Griffin should look long and hard on whether they want to start spending the attorney's fee money that they're getting from yeah. Alex either before or now because it's coming all back in. What the receiver does is he goes out and he um, secures 
cures and marshals all of the money, and it goes into a fund. And then the court decides on the victims who gets it. Alex is going to absolutely, in his jail cell when he hears this, he knows the, because he's a lawyer, he knows what is coming. And there's no stopping the receiver. There's no stopping. There's no, they, they go wherever the money goes. It's absolutely follow the money. He literally comes in and takes over a failed entity or a failed uh, person with tons of money and tons of creditors. He becomes a legitimate, he's like a, a, a he's a combination of a, of a judge and the highest ranking law enforcement officer you can imagine. And he has direct line communication with the judge who will preside over the case. Got it. So keeping up with all the lawsuits against Alec Murdoch is super tricky, and I want to do a quick recap, because Eric Bland, Joe McCullough, and Mark Tensley all filed motions to freeze Alec's assets. So the first lawsuit was Mark Tensley's lawsuit. Mark Tensley has been in this fight against the Murdochs for more than two and a half years. He filed the wrongful death lawsuit against Alec Murdoch, Buster Murdoch, and others on behalf of Mallory Beach's mother in March 2015. And for a recap, in February 2019, a highly intoxicated Paul Murdoch, who was 19 years old at the time, was allegedly driving his father's boat when 19-year-old Mallory Beach was killed in a horrific crash near Paris Island, South Carolina. At the time of Paul Murdoch's death in June 2021, he faced three felony boating under the influence charges for that crash. While Paul Murdoch was charged in that crash, he was never named as a defendant in the civil lawsuit. The lawsuit instead seeks damages from Parker's 55 gas station where the underage Paul Murdoch allegedly purchased alcohol prior to the crash as well as Murdoch's brother and father who facilitated his drinking, according to the lawsuit. Paul's grandfather, Randolph Murdoch III, who died just days after Paul and Maggie's murders, was originally a defendant in the suit and then later dropped from the lawsuit in 2019. Randolph's estate, as well as other parties such as the Woods family that hosted an oyster roast that evening and Luther's where Paul Murdoch took two shots before crashing the boat, apparently settled in the case, while Alec Murdoch, Buster Murdoch, and Parkers have refused to settle. For years, the Beaches lawsuit was the only ongoing civil action against Alec Murdoch until September 2021, and now the disgraced lawyer faces a flurry of lawsuits. The second lawsuit against Alec Murdoch was filed on September 15th by attorney Eric Bland and his partner Ronald Richter on behalf of Gloria Satterfield's sons. That lawsuit alleges that Alec Murdoch conspired with his attorney friend Corey Fleming and his banker friend Chad Westendorf to steal millions of dollars from a wrongful death settlement. Alec is the only individual in that lawsuit who has not paid back a dime of the settlement money. And the third lawsuit against Alec Murdoch was filed by attorney Joe McCullough, who was representing Connor Cook, one of the four survivors of the 2019 boat crash. That lawsuit alleges that Alec Murdoch conspired with others, including Corey Fleming, to frame Connor Cook in the boating accident that killed Mallory Beach. There are three other lawsuits that have been filed against Alec Murdoch, and we will get to those later in this episode. But the three that I just mentioned on behalf of the Beaches, Connor Cook, and the Satterfields are important because all three of these plaintiff attorneys filed motions to freeze Alec's assets. So a week after these motions were filed, Judge Daniel Hall, who is the judge over Mark Tensley's case, held a hearing in Chesterfield County, which is in the northern region of the state. Mark Tensley took center stage of the hearing in front of about a dozen media cameras. He argued that the receivership in this case is necessary for the many victims to get justice. While Tinsley recognized that appointing a receiver is a severe remedy, he argued that the circumstances in this case met the requirements. Um, Alex Murdoch, by Dick Carpenter's admissions on national TV, has no money. He has no insurance to defend these lawsuits related to the thefts of these monies. Millions and millions of dollars he's admitted to have sold. He is going to jail. 
There's no question about it. You roll your jail because your lawyer can't get on national television and say you've stolen and then you it, it, any other way. Many of us there on Friday looked around the courtroom and noticed that no one was really there for Alec Murdoch. Murdoch's criminal defense attorney, Dick Harpalian, was expected to show up to support his client, according to my sources, but he was nowhere in sight. While Harpalian and Griffin are his criminal defense attorneys and are not involved in the civil side of Alec Murdoch's cases, it was telling to me that neither of them showed up on Friday. Perhaps it means that they aren't all in for their client? Also noteworthy, I didn't see a single representative from NP Strategies, the PR firm that has worked on behalf of the Murdoch family. And Buster Murdoch, whose own assets were up for debate, didn't show his face on Friday. Not a single member of the Murdoch family showed up at the Chesterfield County Courthouse on Friday. The only person who was on his side was John Tiller, who represents the only insurance company that has agreed to cover just some of the costs up to $500,000 for the boat crash lawsuit. There is no one to defend Mr. Murdoch. Um, in, in all due respect to Mr. Tiller, Mr. Tiller was a fine lawyer and I respect him greatly. Uh, he's been hired by one particular insurance company and, and I sincerely doubt that they're gonna pay to defend him on these unrelated claims. A receiver can do that. A receiver can make sure that the Edison Beach property is not wasted, not lost, not used, because the air conditioner is turned off in this time of year when the humidity is such that it causes damage to the home because it's going to be lost to the tax. Um, the receiver will be able to go in and unwind either pursuant to the statute of Elizabeth or the assignment statute. There's a number of statutes that they can unwind. But it's unnecessary for us to waste all that time and all that money on the backside of, of all of these secret transactions that Buster Murdoch is undergoing when we can stop now. And the receiver would be able to stop that. Several times, Tinsley quoted and questioned Dick Harpootlian's claims that Alec was a poor man with no assets. Uh, but, but obviously, uh, he's living pretty well for somebody who has no assets. He's got a crisis manager from a very expensive law firm. He's got a number of lawyers in addition to Mr. Tiller uh, that he's paying for. And, and he's living pretty good for somebody with no money and, and spending a lot of money um, not have it. Tinsley argued that the Murdochs had been making a lot of brow-raising financial moves in recent months. Particularly on September 15th, Alec Murdoch granted his power of attorney to his son, Buster Murdoch. He's not going to be able to earn any more money. He's not going to, he's going to jail. And so in this case, as well, uh, Mr. Murdoch is going to jail. Not only can he not earn more money from which to pay these creditors, uh, he has no incentive to do so, and, and the fear there is, is that he's going to, as the court said, hide the money in parts unknown. Uh, and his design to reduce all of his assets to cash and leave the state for parts unknown. So that's what they're doing here. We've, we've shown you uh, a copy of the resolution where uh, the hunting club, this green swamp hunt club, share were sold. Uh, I understand it was sold for somewhere in the neighborhood of $250,000. Uh, they have a Grady White boat. Uh, and, and this is a share in 7,000 acres of property along the Savannah River. Uh, they listed their boat. Uh, there were a number of farm implements and, and large tractors at the Moselle property. I understand that Buster Murdoch has sold those uh, for cash. Hensley argued that Buster and Alec Murdoch are purposely liquidating their assets. In court, he brought up Buster's recent Vegas vacation with his uncle John Marvin, who, by the way, documented the trip on his public Instagram. Fitz News sources saw both Buster and John Marvin playing roulette and blackjack at the Venetian just hours after Alec was denied bond a few weeks ago. And I believe that unless the court steps in, and takes control and allows the appointment of the receiver, that's what there will be at the end of the day. That Dick Carpentier's prediction that he's got no money will be the truth at the end of the day. They've got money right now, Your Honor. They couldn't do this. They couldn't pay uh, Jim Griffin $750 an hour to get on television and give interviews. They couldn't pay crisis manager if they didn't have money. Those people don't work for free. There's money, there are assets, but we don't know where they are. And we would simply like them preserve them. If Mr. Murdoch has 
some claim, some need, uh, something that comes up that where he needs money, he can make, he can petition if it's an attorney fee, if there's some other reason that he needs some money, but he's already paid his lawyers a lot of money. Uh, not, not his lawyers, his other lawyers, his criminal lawyers. Uh, it, this is not a burdensome process. This is a process to do justice. This is a process to protect everyone. Multiple times, Tensley mentioned that there are victims out there who don't know that Alec Murdoch stole from them. And he argued that this process will help those victims get their money back. Um, it, it, is, it is a way that we protect the assets. It is a way that we protect all the claimants, including these people who haven't even, may not even know their money stolen. If you enter into a, a, a structured settlement that indicates that in 10 years you're going to start getting your payments, you may not even know he stole $89,000 or $750,000 or $65,000 from you. You don't even know it yet, but it's coming. Finally, Mark Tensley argued that this case is extraordinary and calls for extraordinary measures because Ellick is a different kind of criminal. It is not as simple as Mr. Griffith wants to contend that we can just go and, and, and go. This was a gentleman who's a very sophisticated criminal. He stole millions and millions of dollars, admittedly stole millions of dollars, and manipulated the system. This is not your average criminal. And so to suggest that it's just going to be a simple feat to go in there and be able to undo and figure out what all he's done uh, is intellectually dishonest. Tensley mentioned the number of extensive real estate transactions between Barrett T. Bulware and Alec Murdoch. In September, Fitznews exclusively reported on these real estate transactions between Bulware, who is an alleged drug smuggler, and Murdoch. We're going to get into all of that and the jellyfish gambit, which is related to that, in another episode. There are a number of properties in which the taxes are delinquent, not just this beach house uh, in Hampton and Colleton counties. There are extensive real estate transactions between uh, Mr. Bowler, uh, the, the gentleman who, or the family that they satisfied the $970,000 debt to. It is not as simple as Mr. Griffith wants to contend that we can just go and, and, and go. This was a gentleman who's a very sophisticated criminal. He stole millions and millions of dollars, admittedly stole millions of dollars, and manipulated the system. This is not your average criminal. And so to suggest that it's just going to be a simple feat to go in there and be able to undo and figure out what all he's done uh, is intellectually dishonest. I would rather, as the representative of one of the claimants against the assets of Mr. Murdoch, receive a portion of those assets than all of nothing. Following Friday's hearing, two additional lawsuits were filed that afternoon claiming that Alec Murdoch had borrowed more than $550,000 from his law partner, John E. Parker, and his brother, Randy Murdoch, since March 2021. In Alec's brother's lawsuit, he claimed that he loaned Alec $75,000 on Thursday, September 2nd which would be two days before Ellick's botched suicide for hire incident and one day before PMPED, which is the law firm started by his family, allegedly confronted Ellick about misappropriated funds. According to Randy's lawsuit, Randy Murdoch paid Ellick $15,000 for his rehab stay. However, as Tinsley pointed out, Ellick's attorney Dick Harbutlian claimed in court twice that Ellick Murdoch's insurance company was paying for his rehab and saying that he was dead broke. So which is it? Randy Murdoch's lawsuit also claimed that Buster has sold various assets belonging to Alec Murdoch to pay for other debts owed to Palmetto State Bank and the rehab, including a tractor and rotary cutter that Buster Murdoch gave Randy for a $43,000 debt coverage. Soon after Randy filed his lawsuit, John E. Parker, who is a partner at PMPED, filed his own lawsuit and that claimed that he loaned Alec the following amounts that he had not paid back. 
$150,000 on March 5th, 2021, $77,000 on May 18th, 2021, and $250,000 on July 25th, 2021, which would be almost two months after Maggie and Paul were murdered. So that would be $550,000 within five months that Alec Murdoch allegedly took from friends and family alone. That is a lot of money, and considering it's on top of the $3.6 million he allegedly stole from the Satterfield settlement just last year. That is an absurd amount of money to go missing so quickly. In a memo filed Monday, attorney Mark Tensley argued that those two lawsuits only support his motion for the court to approve an injunction and receivership. David will read a part of Tensley's memo. These facts raise questions of where Alex Murdoch spent his additional $550,000, to whom he has given it, for what purposes, and was any benefit received in return. If Alex Murdoch is truly broke, it seems strange that his former law partner and his brother, who likely has some intimate knowledge of Alex Murdoch's assets, would take the time and effort to file a lawsuit against him, Tinsley wrote. Then, just four days after the hearing, Judge Hall posted the news. He ruled against Alec Murdoch and granted Tensley's motion, which means that the court will order a temporary injunction over Murdoch's assets, and he will appoint two receivers, who are attorney John T. Lay Jr. and former U.S. attorney Peter M. McCoy Jr. as receivers in the case. This decision gives Lay and McCoy broad powers to not only lock up Alec Murdoch and his son Buster's assets, but to sue for the recovery of those assets as well. After this decision was made, Eric Bland spoke with me, and he told me that he believes that the judge's ruling following Murdoch's bond hearing two weeks ago shows that the tides are changing in the South Carolina justice system. He's, he, there's a clear message being sent, Mandy, that this justice system that we have here now has had enough of Alex Murdoch. Enough of the games, enough of the, the, you know, the lawyer machinations that um, he wants to employ. Uh, they feel like he's a clear, but the, the message over the last two weeks is, one, he's clear and present danger, uh, and obviously a potential flight risk or a danger to himself. So he was jailed without bond. Two, that he represents a very dangerous man with a pen. And our courts have said, we don't want that to happen anymore. He, he, we're not going to let him decide who gets paid and who doesn't get paid, where money goes and where it doesn't go. He's going to have to ask permission from daddy from now on. I asked Eric Bland just how rare this is that a judge orders a receivership over assets in a civil case. It's usually done um, after a judgment or through a dissolution of a company. It's more receiver, receivers are very common, Mandy, for companies that are unwinding or winding down or things like that. Okay. Like an Enron or, you know, something else like that. Very rare for an individual, very, very rare to apply to an individual, very rare. Um, but the court's looking at Alex like he's an enterprise and, uh, They've had enough of them, and yeah. our courts are sending a signal to him that he should hear loud and clear that I don't think you're going to be able to get the sweetheart Murdoch deal that you thought you would get by walking into a court. It's not going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think he's going to be serving his time underneath the jail, underneath the courtroom. I mean, he's going to be serving some significant time when all this is over with. Tuesday's ruling raises a big question in the Murdoch murder saga. Now that Alec Murdoch's assets are locked up, will his quote-unquote bulldog attorneys 
and fancy PR team still work for him? Who will fight for him now? Eric Bland told me that the receivers will have the power to investigate every financial transaction that Alec Murdoch was directly or indirectly connected with. Could that mean that we will finally find out if Maggie and Paul had life insurance policies when they were murdered on June 7th? Stay tuned. Stay tuned to the Murdoch Murders podcast and fitsnews.com, that's F-I-T-S news.com for the latest updates. Follow me on Twitter at Mandy Matney, that's M-A-N-D-Y M-A-T-N-E-Y and follow me on Instagram at Mandy underscore in underscore Hilton Head for more updates. There's so much to unpack in this case, and Mandy works tirelessly to expose the truth. But the truth is, she works hard, and she does get tired. If you believe, like I do, that Mandy is the best in the business, and I'm a little biased, visit MurdochMurdersPodcast.com and click the Support the Show link to learn how you can help. Leave a five-star review to offset the haters. Refer an advertiser and get a finder's fee. Or advertise your company, product, or service. We can geotarget across the globe and find the right audience to suit your needs. Help us get Luna some treats so she doesn't interrupt the show as much. And absolutely subscribe to FitzNews.com. Mandy and Will are revolutionizing journalism, and your subscriptions are invaluable to that mission. Plus, you get awesome content every day. And don't forget to leave a five-star review, unless you're going to be nasty and talk about my vocal fry. The Murdoch Murders podcast is created by me, Mandy Matney, and my fiancé, David Moses. Produced by Luna Shark Productions. (laughs) What's that? That's Luna saying thank you to Wolfgang Bakery in Bluffton, South Carolina for all of the amazing treats you gave her. Thanks to y'all, Luna has been fully occupied while we worked on this episode, so thank you so much. Stick with us, y'all. We have great episodes in store.